Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail, and today we are going to be talking about two very unsettling unsolved murders that occurred along the Appalachian Trail at different times. They weren't during the same year or in the same areas. Uh, but before we get into that, I just wanted to let everybody know that I will be going out west soon, which I've discussed in some previous videos, to hike parts of the uh, Pacific Crest Trail as well as to retrace some of the steps of some of the missing hiker cases that I have covered on my channel, along with meeting up with some SAR people, uh, team members, and as well as also meeting up with some people that have gone missing and then subsequently were rescued and that wanted to be interviewed so that they could tell their story and then hopefully that will you know help others and prevent these situations from happening again. So in any event, I just wanted to let everyone know that I will still be uploading videos while I'm out there, um, but the, the schedule, the upload schedule might not be the same as it's been just because I will be on foot the whole time and it will be, you know, dependent on certain variables. But um, all right, with that said, guys, let's get into this video. And I also wanted to say this video is in no way meant to fear monger. I think that through hiking and hiking is still very safe. It's more to just bring a renewed interest in their cases and possibly to help, you know, lead to some of them being solved. So for those that are unaware, the Appalachian Trail is 2,200 miles long or 3,500 kilometers. It's a national scenic trail. It's um, it goes through from Springer Mountain in Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine. It passes through 14 states and it's managed by the National Park Service, the U.S. States Forest Service and a nonprofit Appalachian Trail Conservatory. And the first case I want to talk about is Louise Chaput. She was Canadian and this case happened back in November of 2001. Louise had traveled to New Hampshire to complete the solo hike by herself and this was something common. She liked solo hiking. Luis was uh, a counselor and she worked with both married couples and she also worked with inmates at a detention center in her hometown. On November 15th, 2001, Luis, who was 52 years old, drove from Sherbrooke, Quebec to Pinkham's Graham, where she had reserved a room at the Joe Dodge Lodge at the Appalachian Mountain Club Visitor Center for a long weekend in the mountains. She said that she was, you know, going to be fine. She told her relatives, if I'm not coming back Monday, you can call the police. But that was a joke, her daughter Corinne told the, the news team. With daylight fading, she arrived at 3 p.m. She put asked the AMC worker at the Pink Up Notch Visitor Center directions to a short hike that would get her home before dusk. The clerk there suggested a short walk, a short walk around Lost Pond Trail which just began across the street from where the lodge was located. Unfortunately, Luis was never seen alive again after this point. Luis failed to return home and re her partner reported her missing. A search was started by authorities and Luis's silver Ford Focus was found at the Glen Falls parking area on November 20th. Two days later on November 22nd, around Thanksgiving, hikers found her body. She was located only 200 yards from the Glen Boulder Trail, one quarter mile from the lodge, which led to the mountain isolation where Louise must have decided to hike instead of the easier Lost Pond Trail. Police would later tell the news teams that Chaput was hiking on the Glen Boulder Trail, but that whoever killed her forced her off the trail and brought her down into a clearing about 100 yards away, and her death was ultimately ruled a homicide. She was found with multiple stab wounds to her body. Police said that they believe someone stole the keys to her car, but not the car itself. They said the larger of two of her backpacks she put had were gone. Her hiking shoes, along with her water and chocolate, two things she apparently always took hiking with her, were still in the car. Um, unfortunately, like I said, her body was found with multiple stab wounds on Thanksgiving Day, just a short distance off the Glen Boulder Trail. Police were able to track her movements and found that she had crossed the border at Norton, Vermont at 11.45 a.m. and then at 12.50 p.m. a receipt that would later be found in her car showed that she had made a purchase at the Pickwick in Colebrook. At 3 p.m. Luis was seen for the last time at the Appalachian Mountain Club Visitor Center in Pickham Grant, New Hampshire. The, the clerk reported that Luis spoke French with an accent. Uh, excuse me, spoke with a French accent and said that she had been driving all day and wanted to get in a short hike before it got dark. The clerk at the visitor center, is this is where he recommended the Lost Pound Trail on Route 16, which is 
only a short trail that was very nearby to where they were. Luis left a few minutes later in the car and was never seen again. The autopsy would later obviously confirm the manner of death as homicide, and Luis's dark blue Canuck sleeping bag, a blue backpack with a Canadian insignia on it, and a pendant with an S shape on it, also her car keys uh, with an S pendant were all missing from her, her pack and her car, so those are all things that police are on the lookout for and anybody should be on the lookout for. They're all clues that could possibly help solve this case. You know, and these are the kind of clues that, you know, somebody out there always knows. There's always someone that may, you know, someone's father or friend or sister or brother, you know, that might have been involved in this and like, you know, they've never thought anything bad about this person, but, you know, they might see this video and then see that this pendant is with this S shape is sitting on their father's counter or, you know, and a lot of times these cases are solved in that way. I mean, and people often think like, oh, well, the case is so long ago, they can't be solved. But cases can be solved 30, 40, 50 years out. You know, and Luis was, she loved the outdoors. She loved hiking and she was particularly fond of Mount Washington Valley. And this is just so tragic because this case is, um, you know, it did happen years ago and they have no leads, no suspects. Just hoping that by making this video, we can generate some renewed interest and, um, hope for the case and unfortunately because it is an ongoing investigation there's a lot of things that they haven't released so uh, but they do think that this was a completely random attack they don't think that you know this was someone that she knew or anything like that they couldn't build any connection they just think it was some crazy person that was you know on the trail looking for I guess someone to murder at that time who, who knows you know but once again, Louise uh, was murdered in November of 2001. She was from Quebec, Canada, and she had come out to New Hampshire to just do some day hiking and basic hiking. And she had had a, a reservation at the Appalachian Mountain Lodge. However, after she failed to return home the following Monday, friends and family called the police to report her missing. And she was subsequently found on Thanksgiving Day murdered with multiple stab wounds. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the New Hampshire Cold Case Division at 603-271-2663. I will also have a link in the description in one of the sources that has a, a button where you can submit a tip online as well. My thoughts and prayers go out to Louise and her family and friends and just hoping that this case can be solved someday soon. The next case I want to talk about happened in August of 2011 when a group of hikers came across a dead body that was lying in a shallow grave alongside the trail to Cow Camp Gap Shelter in George Washington Jefferson National Forest. The area is in Mount Pleasant Special Management Area. Scott Lilly was likely dead for around 12 days before his discovery. He had set out on June 15, 2011 on a southbound hike to uh, Springer Mountain in Georgia. The Mount Pleasant Special Management Area is located in Amherst County in Virginia, just north of Route US 60 and east of the Blue Ridge Parkway. This is the area where he was found. It's several miles from the Wiggins Spring Road, which the trail crosses. Uh, Lily's Appalachian journey began in June of 2011, and he was really into Civil War history, and it had been a dream of his to come out here and see all these sites. He went by the trail named Stonewall, most likely after Stonewall Jackson. He intended to hike southbound from Maryland to Springer Mountain in Georgia, but he obviously never made it. Made it. The last time anyone had ever seen or heard from him was around the end of July when he climbed the Priest only a day or two walk to the 4,063 foot mountain uh, and located in Nelfs County, Virginia, where the Appalachian Trail crosses it. And originally they weren't sure what happened until the chief medical examiner would later release the cause of death. And according to the Times Dispatch, Lily had died of a result of asphyxiation by suffocation. Lily's blue or purple backpack, Ozark Trail hiking shoes and other gear were never recovered. The Appalachian Trail Conservatory has recovered some of the gear and are interested in speaking to anyone who may have found any of these other items. Of particular interest are Lily size 10 Walmart brown and orange Ozark Trail shoes. 
The investigators find that found that to be an odd choice just because of their low price and anyone for making a long distance trek usually uh, would buy something more expensive. However, it was uh, known that one of the main problems Lily, Scott, Scott Lilly was having was that his shoes were worn out. Other items that were uh, presented at the press conference at the time included purchases Lily had made at Walmart before his death, which included things like fruit snacks, dried soups, canned sausage, powdered drink mixes, and sleeping pills. Um, in the fir family's first original comments about their case, his sister, Allison Lilly, traveled from her home in Indiana and just, you know, described her brother's love for the outdoors and history and just begging for information for anything involving this case. He was not only a brother, but a son, nephew, and uncle to his family members and had many friends too. Scott was from South Bend, Indiana, and it was his lifelong dream to go and hike the Appalachian Trail because he wanted to visit the Civil War sites and he just had always had this love of the Civil War and this was you know, one of his lifelong goals to go and see and tour all these places. Special Agent Stephen Duena said Lily is believed to have last been seen alive at the Cow Camp Gap Shelter on July 31st. The body, he said, was found partially buried, not by natural forces, but by someone had to try and conceal the evidence, obviously. Since the body was found on federal land, the FBI was in charge of the case, but in addition to the FBI, the agencies, including Amherst County Sheriff's Office, the Virginia State Police, and the U.S. Forest Service, also assisted the FBI in their investigation. Michael Mohart, the special agent in charge of the FBI's Richmond office, described several items of gear Lily was carrying, including a blue or purple pack, a propane camp stove, and a handheld Nintendo video game. Mohart said investigators collected more than 100 items of evidence and covered more than 270 miles of trail, and they conducted over 83 interviews, including two from foreign countries. Shortly after the body was found, investigators released about a half a dozen trail names of people believed to have had contact with Scott. Duane has said those people have all been identified and interviewed, but have refu he's refused to say whether they had excluded them as suspects in the homicide. Another FBI spokeswoman said that the names listed were not suspects or persons of interest, but Duane has said it was possibly possible new information could be developed that would lead investigations back to them. You know, and again, a lot of this is they just don't release a lot of the information because it's an ongoing investigation, but they have issued a $10,000 reward uh, for any information leading to solving Scott Lilly's case. At one point, there was a lead regarding somebody with a trail name Papa Smurf, but unfortunately, you know, with trail names, so many people have the same one. And as the agents in this case said that the trail names actually you know, they hamper the investigations because it's basically an alias. So, unfortunately, that lead didn't go anywhere either. The investigating agencies ask anyone who has any information about this case or who found any of Scott Lilly's gear or came into contact with him during this time to call 804-261-1044, no matter how significant or insignificant you think it is. Scott Lilly was a white male, 5'8", 150 pounds, wore dark glasses, had a beard, and he was last seen on July 31st of 2011 near the Cow Camp Gap Shelter. So if any of you are in that area or know someone who is in the area, please uh, contact the proper authorities if you have any information you think could help. And I know a lot of times it's frustrating because investigations like these, they limit the information they release. but. Like I said, my hope with these videos are to, you know, spark a renewed interest in their cases. And, you know, this happens over time and time again, that renewed interest in case and cases and more people looking at them often leads to them being solved. So again, this is my intention with, you know, reviewing these cases is not to fear monger. I still think hiking and being out on trail is very safe. You're more likely to be killed in a city or something like that. So please don't take it like that. I'd like to dedicate this video to Louise Chaput and Scott Lilly and of course to their families and friends. My thoughts and prayers go out to them and just hoping that they can find some closure and their cases will be solved soon. I want to thank everybody for watching as always and all your support and for everybody new that has subscribed. Just wonderful having all your support and thank you to coag.ig for the music. See you next time.